A long time ago, in the 14th century, Switzerland was a very unhappy country. Austria, a neighboring country, had invaded and conquered Switzerland, and the Austrian army of occupation was brutal and cruel to the Swiss people. They were kept poor and hungry, while the Austrians grew fat and rich. The cruelest Austrian of all was a man named Gessler. He governed the city of Altdorf. To humiliate the townspeople, he placed a large pole with a golden feathered hat on the top of it, right in the marketplace. It was the symbol of the Austrian conquerors. Gessler decreed that no citizen could pass this pole without kneeling in the dirt and bowing humbly before it. To make sure everyone obeyed this harsh law, he had two ferocious soldiers standing next to the pole to beat or imprison anyone who refused to kneel before it. Some people were even slaughtered on the spot by these soldiers. A few miles away from Altdorf, in the city of Bergland, there lived a hunter named William Tell. He was a good man, loved and respected by all. William Tell was famous for his marksmanship with a crossbow. With a single arrow, he could bring down the fastest mountain goat darting among the rocks a great distance away. But William Tell longed for freedom from the terrible Austrian yoke of oppression, as did his countrymen. They all waited for the day the conquerors would be driven out of Switzerland. One day, William Tell went to visit a blacksmith in Altdorf to get steel tips for his arrows. Walter, his eldest son, went with him. Tell did not know of Gessler's law, and when he arrived in the marketplace, he was shocked to see an old woman being forced to kneel before the pole by the two brutal soldiers. Grasping his son's hand, he proudly walked past the pole without kneeling. The soldiers ordered him to kneel, but he refused. I kneel only before God, he declared. Naturally, Tell and his son Walter were arrested for this disobedience and taken to see the tyrant Gessler. When the soldiers reported what had happened, Gessler was impressed by the courage of the hunter. Who are you, hunter? He asked. My name is William Tell. And this is my son, Walter, Tell replied, fixing Gessler with a steady eye. Uh-huh, said Gessler. I've heard of you. You are the hunter reputed to be the best bowman in Switzerland. Well, hunter, I shall give you a chance to prove your skills with the crossbow. Smiling evilly, Gessler rasped out the horrible plan his mind had just conceived. Your son shall be tied to a linden tree in the courtyard. An apple shall be placed on his head. You will stand 100 paces away, and with one arrow only, shoot the apple off your son's head with your crossbow. If you succeed, I shall set you both free. Tell. Bursting with anger at Gessler's cruel command, cried, Kill me, if you will, but leave my son alone. Walter looked up into his father's eyes and spoke bravely. I'm not afraid, father. I want you to show these Austrians how fine Swiss marksmanship really is. Preparations were made according to Gessler's instructions. Walter was tied to a linden tree in the courtyard, and an apple was placed on his head. A large crowd gathered. The townspeople loved Tell and his son and wanted to see what would happen. Tell stood 100 paces away, 
and bent over to take an arrow from his quiver. Secretly, he hid a second arrow inside his jacket. Then, standing erect, he stood watching his son standing bravely at the other end of the courtyard. The crowd grew very quiet as they waited for Tell to shoot. Slowly, Tell placed the arrow against the bowstring, raised it against his cheek, and squinted at the small target. Suddenly, he let it fly and the arrow swished through the air and pierced the apple on Walter's head. It fell, cut in half, to the ground. The people cheered. A Swiss had been victorious over the Austrian conquerors. before Gessler. The second arrow fell from under his jacket to the ground. Gessler saw it and asked Tell, What was the second arrow for? Tell answered, If the first arrow had killed my son, the second would have pierced your heart. I have never missed twice. Twice. 